So just a couple of minutes more. Yeah. Hello, can you hear us? Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Ram. Welcome back. Yeah, we are, we are prepared, yes. <laughs> we are here. <laughs> we are, uh, people are slowly coming back from lunch. So just a couple of minutes more. Was mache ich dann als erstes? Nein, nein, du sagst nur, wo man was findet und das wo man nicht. Okay. Er hat noch Arbeit im Gang. Wir haben noch dann eine. Schau, du hörst. Was ist denn? Das ist ein Wunsch. Ja, wir starten nach einer Kuppel von Minuten. Two minutes more. He's not able to. He's not able to. Hi, you can hear us, right? I'm here. Yeah. Is okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. He's not able to hear us. No, no, he can hear us. You can hear us, right? You're right? He's not able to Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. They can hear us. He's not able to answer. Just go. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay, we'll start now. Yeah. yeah, hello everybody. Welcome back. I guess this audience needs no introduction to... <laughs> You're right. You can hear us, right? They are going to... Yes, uh, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. great. Uh, so they will continue from what they, where they left off in the previous session, uh, which is on yeah. designing a curriculum, a spiral model. Uh, so over to you, you right. I guess this audience needs no introduction to... What's going on? They are going to... Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, great. Uh, so they will continue from what they where they left off in the previous session, uh, which is for designing a, a spiral They must have kept it off. So what do you do? Hey regular, can you turn did you have YouTube on? Can you just turn it off? They have kept it off. So we hear you very well. Yeah, okay. So you, you can start now. Yes. You can start, okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks. so the reason why uh, you see this online material on the web page is because later on we will be uh, working with the same material that is online available as well. And so we wanted to give you uh the information where so we hear you very well yeah okay so you can start now yes we can start okay <laughs> so, <laughs> so the reason why uh you see this online material on the web page is because later on we will be uh working with the same material that is online available as well and so we wanted to give you uh the information where you oh, can you very well. yeah, okay. So the reason why uh, you see it keeps going in circle, so I start talking again. Um, the website, this is how it looks when you land. No, you cannot see it yet. Now you can see. This is how the website looks when you land on it. And the material that we will be using 
um, is the learn umgebung which means le learning platforms in English. In the middle, just for your information, uh, the programming environment is in the middle, and on the left-hand side is the, um, the textbooks. What we will be working on is the Lernumgebungen learning platforms. So now I turn on the camera and I will let your eye take over. So okay, so it is not so easy to to have a workshop on the distance, I think. But any, anyway, we will try. This is also the reason we prepare these interactive environments that you can also work without us. So what we will do now, we will continue in the good tradition of computer science unplugged. What does it mean? We will now focus not on programming, but on other topics, really, which you can work with a class without computers. And on the other hand, what means good tradition of computer science unplugged, we will touch topics. Maybe people don't believe that you can do it in some age, but we will show you how to do things which are, which looks maybe non-trivial, in very early age and with success so the people the pupils would be happy and successful in her work okay so we choose two topics the first one is order and search okay this is i think uh, very big topic not only for computer science and especially for pupils why they have to make order, okay? And this is a very nice game, because to make order is not for free, okay? So in the computer science, we always consider the following trade-offs. You have to do some investment, some work to, to create order. You have to invest some work to keep the order, if the data are changing, updated, and so on. And at the very end, you have you want to be efficient when searching for a concrete item. Okay? And all this together is the game. And because this game is not easy, there is no optimal strategy for everything. Which strategy you choose as computer scientists now, not about teaching now, depends heavily on the dynamic of your data set. How frequently the data set is changing, okay? So what we want to do now is first kindergarten and first two classes of primary schools, how to teach binary search, sorting, and hashing, okay? So let us Go on. So I will start with sorting and binary search. And the starting point is the following one. We have these playing cards you can see here. What is nice of these cards? The pupil did not need to know to count. They only, the only what they have to be able is to compare two cards, whether they are equal or whether there are more beavers on one side and the other one. Okay? This is everything what they need to know. This is some kind of local operation and this works. So starting point would be like that. So you will take some cards. You will mix them like that, put it somehow here, and tell the pupils, please, we are looking for the card with two beavers. Not in this way, as I told you, you have one card where you have exactly two beavers and show them we are searching for the same one. We have two sets of equal cards, so it is no problem to manage. 
And then the pupils will start, and they will be looking for that and trying to oh, find it. Okay. After some number of such attempts, they will recognize that okay, sometimes it comes early, sometimes you have to tear almost all cards. So they can really try somehow to 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 to, to observe how much effort they have to do. And then they see this is a question of somehow being lucky. So, so they cannot really manage this. And it is a lot of work if you take more cards. Okay. And then you can present the following idea, maybe at the beginning with the open cards, but the crucial idea is not to make it with open cards, but with cover card, but I will explain you soon. So you have these cards in the right order, you see. You don't know maybe which numbers you have, but it is really ordered, okay? So it is sorted. Now you have these cards like that. You can tell the pupils, okay, you know, this is the smallest one, the largest one, everything is ordered. And how you would like to search for this card, okay? And then you start to offer the strategy, and this must look like that. Okay, let us look on the card in the middle. And open it and compare with the card you are searching for. So, you can pay see, okay, the card you are searching for is larger than the in the middle. And then we ask the pupils, okay, so can you tell us where now to continue in the search, okay? And we usually get the right answer. They know that here are smaller card on the left side, so they don't need to consider those. They know this card must be here, okay? And this is exactly the principle of binary search. With one question, one comparison, you reduce your searching space to half, okay? So then you know you have to continue. Okay, let us look on that one. This one, okay. So I think everybody knows this principle, okay? And uh, what is important, for instance, if you have one million cards, it's a lot, okay? 30 questions are enough to find the card you are searching for. This means this is a very efficient effort. And what you have to do, or you have to have before, to have the card sorted. Why this game we play here with cover cards? It's very clear. If you work with children, say you have open cards, then they are able to find everything very quickly because they have the global look. But if you play with cover card, exactly what happens in the memory of the computer, the computer does not see the contents of the places of the memory. Each card is a memory place. And the computer does not is going to other place and looking for them. Okay? So with this game with a card, you really simulate the work of the computer searching for something. Okay? We can also teach sorting in a very simple way. So you see, I will mix the order of the cards it has been sorted before. And I will put them on the table, how as they have been, okay? And there I allow only one simple operation. The operation is take two neighboring cards, open them and compare. If the cards are in the right order, let it be and cover. Okay? Then compare another two cards. You see, okay, the order is not the right one. So you exchange the positions. 
and calm. Okay? And you let the pupils do as long they don't believe that the cards are sorted. <laughs> and then you can look whether it is the case or not. And after some time training and, and, and testing, they can even learn that they can discover whether they are sorted. And they can, if you compare always two, 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 and two, and you don't need any exchange, then you know the cards are sorted. And this is everything what you expect in this very early age, but it is already a lot. And what is again very nice on this story from computer science point of view, that you are sorting globally an arbitrary number of cards with local operation. You look only on two neighboring places in the memory, compare the content and make exchange if necessary. This is everything. So local operation, and you reach the global order. So now regular uh, will let you to, to try to work it with, unfortunately, not unplugged now, but, but we cannot play with you now with the cards in your place, so you can play this game behind the screen. So we're back in the learning uh, environment, the online one. I enter. To make it easier, we have a bit of filter. It's so many, it's better to, to, to use the filters. And it is Rätsel und Spiele. German, it is, in English, it would be puzzles and games for kindergarten one and two. And the sorting is coming up <laughs> in here. Um, I think the best is, um, sorry, the first, so these are five environments underneath it. Uh, the first one is with open cards. I believe what Yurai said to go with the covered ones is actually more natural. So once we go in, we can actually decide which of the two colors, uh, two cards we want to see. We see them. We take the decision. Is it in the correct order? In this case, it is not. So I switch. Then I close. It closes again. Here, I need to switch as well. And when I think I'm done, I ask Ada whether it was correct. And if the, the smiling beaver comes up, it was correct. If it's a sad beaver coming up, it was incorrect. I redo again. And Sorry. yeah, the, uh, the next game would be with Wula. And But you can also have three levels of <clears throat> hardness. It, it just means you have more cards. The same game here. Sequence, no. Yes, we, no, we do not, did not need to change, sorry. And so on. Okay, click on all of that and see if it does not work. Yeah, to show that I was not correct. This is how the viewer looks done. like when it is not yet sorted. Okay. I know it's like. To find the card, as uh, you or I mentioned it, the binary search is with this actually exactly where, where um, how he explained, we need to make the screen a bit bigger to see. This is the card, the, at the lower part, this is the card that we need to put in. And it's always a comparison between uh, now vertical. So this now is bigger, so it must be on the right-hand side. It shows me we exclude the search room. It's only these left. And so now I say, okay, it's these ones. So I put it in here. I get the feedback, the immediate feedback that it was correct. New games here, 
harder level here. Harder level again is more cards. Any questions? Is somebody playing already? No. <laughs> no computer. So I would like to mention you will find also another environment there for um, bigger pupils and and in that case you have even up to 500 cards there so you can really do binary search uh, as a as a process okay good so this was about the starting point uh, for binary search and for simple sorting and now let us come to hashing so what to teach about hashing i would like to say that hashing is the most natural order you can create so i would like to show you some cards now from other kinds so you can have for instance cards with beavers why the cards are interesting because you have more attributes i mean you i don't know whether you understand the, the, the term attribute but you have more properties that can have different values you can observe. So you have the different parts of clouds and different colors. So this is one possibility. Then you have cards. They have colors and forms like these ones. Okay. So there are two attributes, the form and the color here. You have another cards where you have Flowers is the size, have three attributes, size, which kind of flower it is, and color. So these are cards with three attributes, and you have still, if, you, if it is not enough, if you need more attributes, then you can have even these cards with castles with many attributes. So why I'm telling this? Because what does it mean now, non-digital, to make hashing? So you, the pupils will get a set of cards, okay? And then they can always start as, as before. It means they have to search for one without any order and observe that it is a lot of work, okay? And then, he proposed the following game. Okay? They take one attribute and divide the, the organizing, the order means that they divide the set of cards into the groups depending on the values of attributes. So for instance, if I have this set, and I will say, okay, I will take as attribute the forms, then I will get these groups and I will distribute the cards inside of these groups. You see how I'm working and now I'm done. Okay? And in this case, this is something like almost perfect in the sense that you will get four groups, which are approximately of the same size, okay? And now what is the game for sure? You are searching for something, and the difference is now that you don't search in the all cards. You can cover them. You have a special signs. What is, for instance, here? There are triangles, okay? You have the signs in these groups. And in these groups, okay, and in these groups, rectangles, okay. And then if you are searching, you take something and say, okay, I would like to find, I don't know what, does not matter. For instance, something, like, oh, I don't have this, sorry. Red triangle, and for sure, the searching is going only in this one group. 
Okay? And this is truly hashing the most used and efficient strategy for, for working with data. Okay? So, the goal is clear. You want to distribute your objects into several sets following the values of some attributes in such a way that the group are small and have the same size. And now the games we play with the children, I will only tell you, can look like color. We will give pupils a set of cards and they have to discover which attribute is suitable for hashing. So for instance, they will take color and fix that half of the card is one group because the most of the cards are red or whatever, okay? And then it is a not a good distribution. And they can try another one, another attribute, for instance, the form, and then it fits very well. And we can do it with all these cards I, I showed you already. So the first step the pupils learn is to find an attribute or relations between attributes, this is the second stage, with the property that the objects are distributed evenly. Okay? The second game looks like following. They find a good distribution for their cards, and then we play a birthday or Christmas time or whatever, and they will get new cards to that. And after adding these new cards, the distribution is not good anymore. Okay? So they have to think about, okay, I have to search in our terminology for another hashing function, but it means for another attributes that is able to distribute the, the, the change set of cards after the dynamical change in this way. Okay? And so in that way, what they really play is the work of data managers maybe 40, 50 years ago. Because what they really did was they had a set of data, they were with it and find a good hashing function, use it to distribute the data. So I don't know how much you know about this concept from computer science, but maybe I have to tell in generally what means hashing. Hashing means I know what I am searching for, and I can in very quick time compute in which group it is, okay? So in our case, it is clear. I am searching for red triangle that I know, okay, I will search in the group for triangles, okay? Okay. So it means everything for what I am searching, I can immediately say in which group it is, and then I'm searching on this group. And the group is small, then I'm fast. Okay? So this is the strategy the computer science used to manage data. Okay. So um, are there some questions to that? If not, then we can think about how to continue with this topic. Um, I had a question. Shall we can I? Can I? please yeah. say those cards, as you notice, they go completely without words. So the explanations are, of course, in a German written textbook, but the cards themselves um, are actually, you know, language independent. So let me show you quickly, if I can, uh, that this is actually, it looks like a textbook, but this is, uh, here the cards are inside and you just break them out. But these are available and language independent. Yeah. Good, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, now let us explain how you can play with pupils in, in classes, maybe 
fifth, six or later with this hashing. Okay? So now let us make it really digital. So a very simple example would be, okay, you would like to manage the data of the class, okay? I guess you are about 100 there. This is from it is true. So I will take the number 101, okay? And then we can do the following. So I will take a name. So everybody can take her or his name, okay? And I can assign the order of the letters in the alphabet to the particular letters of, of, of the name. So this starting with zero, I'm not now sure, but I, I think N is 14, okay? And then you can continue with your surname assigned also numbers, okay? Then you can add all these numbers, okay? And then divide by 101 and look on the rest, okay? And the rest you get is the number of group you are assigned. Are you showing something so, we can't see? I, I hope everybody can follow. I would like to play it with you, but it will be probably Hello. not so easy. Uh, yeah. Are you showing something? We cannot see it. Yeah? We cannot see ah, it. I, I have forgotten to press this button. Thank you. Okay. Ah, Here. That's better. As a, once again, you write your name, surname, you assign to each letter, the order in the alphabet, you sum all these numbers, and then you calculate modulo 101, which means divide by 101 and, and looking on the rest. And the rest, the rest is the number of the group you are assigned. And it is a very nice game because if you play it with your class, you will take note I don't know how big the classes are in, in, in India, but let me say you have class of size 31, okay? So we will take modulo 31 calculation. You let all pupils, each one, calculate his number, and then you will put the distribution on the table. So you will simply write all the numbers you have, and you will notice how many pupils are in this and this group. And then you can look how good the distribution is. Usually it is quite good. Okay? And then you can hashing for the documents of the pupils of the class. So it means if you are searching for something, you take the name, compute the number, and go to the memory space with this number, and look one, two, three documents which are there, okay? So we have a lot of advanced game of this kind. Can you change please to this computer science and different? So now I will show you some textbook Okay, that's good. So, we have one topic there. I think it is almost on the end of the book where we are looking. Oh, is this at the beginning? Okay. Mm. Oh no. Okay, let us let us be now. No, it is not here. But what do you do? Let us switch back to the camera. What do you really do with with the pupils? Is that 
you are drawing diagrams like that. Visualizing the distribution you got. Maybe there is zero here and things like that. And then we really teach to evaluate the distribution, how good it is. Okay? We have some way how to do it. They can calculate. What does it mean, for instance, if you are what, if you are already advanced students, you can work with expected values. How many items you have to see before you find what you are searching for? Okay? It's something like not exactly average of this value here. Okay? So this is the game you can play with the class. And the, what you do then in the high school, in fact, is a similar game as you started to do in the primary school or kindergarten. Uh, you can add more students to the class in such a way that the distribution is not good enough. And then you are searching for another hashing function. And what the pupils have really to learn here is that they could be hash functions which are very bad and hash functions which are good. I show you one example, but let us think about the following. You have some name, okay? I don't know how it is in, in your country, but in Europe it is very typical that the name is finishing with A, okay? So somebody can say, okay, I will distribute the names uh, with respect to the last letter of the name. And then you will get really very bad distribution because half of the names will be in one group. Okay? So you have to play with the class with bad and good distribution and searching for how to find a good hashing function for the given set of data and to learn which are good strategies and are not good strategies. So this is the typical way, really, how the data manager worked about 50 years ago. Now everything is automized. What does it mean, automized? Here now it is only for high school uh, teachers. It means you, you don't work as a man for hours to find a good hashing function for your huge amount of data. This is incredible amount of work, okay? You do it automatically, and automatically means randomly. There is so-called universal hashing. And what does it mean? This is a set of hash, hash function. Does not matter which data you have. If you pick one function from this set randomly, then with high probability, this function will distribute the items evenly. And this is the final stage in the high school that we show them some set of hashing function and let them experiment with this. And this set of hashing functions look like that. I can, for instance, take the same strategy with, with calculating numbers, as I show you for the names. And then I can get some number. Let me say, assign some number y. Absolute, without modulo. OK? And then I will do randomly two numbers, A and B, okay, this is the random choice. Then I will compute A times Y plus B modulo the number of all possible names, so it's a big number, simply to get a number in this range you can get when you work with with the number, not outside, because this number is larger. And then to take this, 
and take modulo the size of your data. Okay? Or a prime close to that. So, this is still easy enough that the pupils are able to calculate it. And what they do now is really to play taking A, B randomly and look what happens with some set of data. And they will fix that almost in all cases, they will get a good distribution. They can even program it and write programs that uh, will visualize the results and things like that, or calculate the quality of the result. So this is, I think, what I wanted. And there are many, many other things about uh, Searching, sorting, we have uh, searching trees also in the middle, in, in age about 15. Uh, we have different sorting algorithms, but I don't have time because each this topic we have, we can have workshop for one week. I only wanted to show you somehow the beginning and the end of the story. So, so I will finish with this topic, uh, order the search, are there some questions to this before starting the next one? Uh, any questions on this topic? Unmute. Yeah, there's a question. I wanted to ask about, uh, I mean, I enjoyed these games. Um, many of these examples are uh, students working on one person, right? One person game. Uh, what about, are there also games where several children can work together or uh, you know, play um, you know so multi-student games, and that would be nice to hear of some examples. So, if, if I, I don't really understand, maybe what you mean, but but maybe this is the right answer. Let yeah, me, I mean, students working in pairs or together. Or what about this game? One is looking for hash function, and another one is changing data. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah. And, and the person changing that data tries nice. to do it in such a way that the hash mm -hmm. function is not good. Correct. And the other guy has is asked to, to find, find the, uh, yeah. a good hashing function for the new data yeah. and things like that. Yeah, that would be a nice to do. Yes, it would be. Yeah. Yes, and good. in this way, both learn, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yes. yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, another point I would like to say, because this is a very, very good question. I mean, in general, if we used to teach, okay, we always don't restrict the game on the way that the teacher is creating tasks and the pupils have to solve them. We have always part, the pupils have to create the task for other pupils, okay? So this is always a part of game in, in our classes. The pupils, because this is the final station. If, if they are asked to find hard tasks, they are really thinking strongly about this, okay? They try to find a hard task for the another group. And this is nice. Okay? Yeah. So any other questions? So in general, for instance, is this uh, game appropriate for the students that you have? Uh, so uh, he said, this is used in which grade you said, Jura? Fifth to eighth or something. Sixth onwards or... Uh, All right. Yeah. So any, any other questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, there are no further questions, Jura. You can get on with the next. <laughs> Okay, so we will continue. Okay, so we will continue with the topic. Uh, Tim Bell already started. And these are self verifying codes. What we will start again from the 
kindergarten and primary school. Yes. So, now it is not so easy for us again, but the point is um, regular will be now ma magician. Magician, okay. <laughs> uh, you, you have to believe that she is playing fair now, okay? And uh, we will start first the following game, so, but I really need somebody who will now work uh, with us as volunteers from the audience. Ram, may I ask you to, to, to play with me now? Yeah. Yeah, please come. Look, I will take one car here, always, and you will tell me whether I have to cover it or open it, okay? Okay. Um, cover it, please. Cover. Okay, the next one. Um, cover again. Please. Um, is there any object? I don't hear you. <laughs> Open <laughs> or cover? Is, is there any goal to the game? No, no, it's not in between. <laughs> Only cover or open. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, it's okay? Yeah, it's okay. The next one. Um, cover it, please. Next one. Open, please. Okay, next one. Open, please. Okay, next one. Open again. Okay. And cover, next. Oh, oh okay. Okay, okay. Uh, but, <laughs> okay let us stop now, okay? okay. Oh. So, Regula is not here. He's really not here. Ah, okay. He leave, left the room. <laughs> I, see. I see. Okay? Okay. And then I need another guy, another volunteer. Winky. Yeah. Who will set whether I have to turn one card or two cards first? So two one cards. or two, two is the first question, two. And now you have to tell me which ones. The which first one. one. Which one? This one? Yeah, that one. one. That one? No, no, the first one. First one, the one before. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe still another one. The last one. Which one, this? Yes. Okay. So, and now I will ask Regula to come and tell us whether we turn one or two cards. And she has to recognize, okay? So Regula is coming here, and she can show you how she will try to find it out. So you have to count. It's two cards. Okay, she so has two cards, so okay, you agree, I hope. Okay. So, do you know how it how it did work? One of them played. Have people played this? We have. Games? We are not cheating. We are not blood? cheating. No? Because this is something the pupils have to <laughs> have to do by themselves. Okay. I think it's in the CS Pachala. Yeah, 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 it's original. Like of the starting point. position. Okay? So I will tell you because this is not really cheating, but something, because I'm the health of the magician. And I, if I cooperate with some volunteers and, 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 and try to put the car here as open or closed, yeah. I always take care that at the very end, the number of open cards is even. Okay? If the number of open cards is even, it is obvious, if you turn one card, you change the parity. Yeah. So after turning one card, you will get an odd number of open cards. Does not matter which one you turn. Right. Okay? And if you turn two cards, then you will have, again, even number of open cards. Right. Okay, can you follow me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Is it clear? So it the, means the number of regular is only even coming cards. and counting very simply. One, two, one, two, one, two, the answer is two. Yeah. Okay? So this is a very simple way of... Not sure whether there were some head shaking everybody could follow. Is there some question? Yeah. Uh, 
Any questions? Yeah. Uh, Uray, you also showed us that people have not done their homework. Because in our CS Patshala website, we have actually put one of these uh, error correcting uh, games. So go and look at all the games in CS Patshala. Yeah, so uh, we do this activity parity check since long right, time right. with our students. Now many of the teachers and students are asking me what is the next level? Why we are doing this activity and how it is going to help us for problem solving? Or some product based solution somehow? So I want extension idea. So you know, you got the question? I did not understand. I, I'm sorry, I did not understand. Also, oh, the question is, uh, one question is, why is this useful? Second, okay, I will explain now. Uh, second okay, question is, about, uh, what next? Uh, finally, we ask pupils to play both, in, uh, to work in both roles of the magician or not the helper. I have been the helper and regular was the magician. And in computer science, it looks like that. You have a data, let us say open cards is one and closed card is zero, okay? So in fact, you have nothing else than a, some sequence of bits, okay? And the role of the helper is to guarantee that the number of one is even. So there is one last control card. I will put in such a way that the number of open card is even. So this one card is not the message. The message is coded here. But this is one additional card, like you saw already with the digits, that has to guarantee this property. Okay, this is so-called control card. And then you have a message and you know the number of ones is even. And then message is sent. And this is with some small probability, it can happen that some bit will be flipped during the transportation. For instance, this one. And you are the receiver, you look on that and say, okay, Oh, the message is not correct. It happened something. I would ask again. Okay? So you can right, yeah. discover one error. Okay. So if you error detection, one error happens, you will discover it. This is so, the simplest way of self verifying right. code. And uh, I think earlier on, he gave an answer on what can be the next step, which is take that barcode and you had all the digits. Barcode, yeah. And the last digit was just a check. Check, yeah. yeah, that is helpful. Thank you so much. Okay, so, so it is actually in practical use, the barcode thing, and it's it's everywhere. This is also is there. The, yeah, it is really Tim Bell explaining the barcode. Correct. This yeah. now is leading to that barcode with the very small children with only open and closed cards. And it's so nice because it is physical it's, and it's not calculating. It is not digital. You play it with uh, Can I keep it here? cards. About, oh. Yeah. Or maybe was it confusing that we used these no, special no, no. cards? No, no, no. It was. I. I don't think it was. Was it confusing? No, no, no. It was not confusing. Everyone oh, okay. was. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you can carry on. Okay, so now we will continue with some more advanced magic. Okay, and this will be the next one. So I will take now a set of cards. In fact, I can. Took also another one, but shall have, I leave? Yes, you have to leave. But the problem is we have not enough place here. So I will start with a small number like that. Okay. And now the game is the following. So in fact, Regula did not see these cards. So I can choose another set. She does not know which cards are here. Okay? So that's the first one. Now, one volunteer will tell me which of these eight cars I have to cover. It means to make something like this. So you have the choice, which one? We can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which one I have to tell? Six. Okay, this one, okay? 
Okay, look on that. Remember that, please. It's next one, next one. Not the f that is five, six. That? Was <laughs> this one? The next one, next one. Next one, okay. Yeah. Then remember that card. I will cover it here. Yeah. And regular has to come and tell me which which one it is. So regular is here, please. You have to tell the So the cap is yellow. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah, the cap is no oh, oh, the cap is red. <laughs> <laughs> the cap is red, sorry. You have to count yellow, not red. Count yellow, not red. And the shirt is yellow. And the so I was talking about the um, yeah the shirt is correct and the pants uh, or the skirt that's why um, must be yellow as well. Okay, you agree? Let us look whether it it is true. It works. <laughs> so. Uh, Thank you. But I hope you, now you know how it worked. So this also answers what next? Can you tell me? <laughs> did you understand the game? Oh yes, many here understood the game. You want to explain? Sir, they were in pairs actually. So uh, they were in pairs. And so we found out which pair is uh, uh, incomplete. I mean, uh, which the partner of which one is being covered. And so this is how we came across. This is my logic. I believe uh, it will be the same for everyone. I the, the cap uh, and the dress, I have recognized it that way. Huh. They were in pairs. You mean girls and boys? No. No. Like uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the dress and the cap. We tallied, I tallied it that way. I do not understand uh, well, but what I do is I count. The, I, I first, I look at one uh, of the three clothing. So I first look at the cap and I count. Uh, in this case, yellow, I count one, two, and about odd there's parity, none here, parity. so no yellow. Yeah. Odd, odd and even parity. Like yes. Yes, yes. So it means that the set of cards is chosen in such a way that all the all so places is here have an even number of yellow parts. So it means you have one, two cups. You are one, two, three, four t shirts. You are one, two, three, four pants or pants or whatever. <laughs> okay. And if you cover one card, then you can now come. One, two. So it means the number of cup is yellow. No yellow cup is missing, it must be red. Okay, now one, two, one. Oh, is is odd. So one T-shirt is missing. Must be yellow. Okay, and the same in the last part. So this is the game the pupils have to learn to play. But yep. what is now in this game? There are many different alternative how to play it. So you have to play this carefully. This is like magic trick because you have to prepare the set with some special properties. Right. Okay. But you can play it even as a memory game. So I could take arbitrary set of cards. Even I can ask some volunteer, some volunteer to choose the cards and put in there. But we don't have this property, okay? The magician is not here, perhaps. Then I ask the magician to come to look for half a minute on that and went away. And then you cover one card and the magician should come and say, I have a very good memory, I know which one it is. And the idea would be the following one. What the magician does for the short look is, 
counting. One, two, three, four is even. So it saves zero for cups. Then counting one, two, three, four, five. Saving one for T shots, okay? And counting one, two, three, four, five, six, zero, four under. Okay? So it means what they save are three bits. Zero, one, zero. Okay? And then after some change or covering, the magician comes and counts again and compare this save bit with the true ones. And if, if there is a difference, it is yellow. Where there is no difference, it is red. Okay? So you can play it as a memory game as well. Okay. Yeah. This was the second card name for sure. What we always do when we play it with a class. They are very proud to be able to do it and they want to show it to the parents and I don't know whom. Uh, we always let all pupils to play all roles. The help roles or the magician. Mostly in the groups of two, three pupils working always together. Okay, the last magic with cards I would like to show you is that one. So I again need uh, maybe Ram, can you help? Me? Oh, I need to go again. <laughs> so uh, I will put this card on the table and you have to tell me cover or open. Are you here? Cover. Open. Next one. <laughs> Cover. Next one. Cover. Next Co one. Open. Okay. Next one. Cover. Next one. Open. Okay. Next one. Open. Next one. Open, 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 open. Open, 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 and no, still two. <laughs> cover. With the piece? Cover, cover. Covered and last one. Cover. Okay. So I have now some rectangle of cards. The size does not matter. It can be arbitrary large depending on the age of the pupils. And what I do now here is that I will add one column and one row. And you can follow me how I do it. Okay. Please follow me carefully. What I do, I will put one. More cards in each column and in each row. Okay. And now you let me, you tell me which one of this card I have to turn regular and I say which one I turned. So please, one of the cards, you can say the number of rows and the number of columns. For instance, this is three, three. This okay. One. So three, three, four. One. Three, four. R row three, column four. Okay. Three, four. Is this, this one? Yes? Yes. Okay. And now we will ask Regula to tell us which one it was. So Regula, you can come. Yeah. Yes, please. You oh, have you to, have many. You have to estimate. <laughs> This one. Okay. So, turn it. Okay. So, you have to tell what I did. Okay. I, you saw me, and that is actually a very hard thing for very small children to see two dimensions. That's why I did. It. Oh, you cannot see my finger. Um, <laughs> Now you can see my finger. I was going along the road, checking whether there is, this one is even or not. This one was not, uh, this was uh, odd. So I paused here. This one is good. So I went this direction. This is um, odd. So I did, did the combination of the two. Crossing of these two. Okay. So maybe you, you, sh you, gave me at the beginning a very easy example of make, let us make it a little bit harder, the starting point. 
Let us take something like that, a starting point. And now what I'm doing as helper, I'm taking care that in each row and in each column, the number of open card is even. So in that case, it is two, so it is covered. Here is three, I have to make it open to get even, okay? It's three, I have to make it open to get even. And I'm doing the same for the columns. So I have one, two here is okay. One, two is also okay. Two is also okay, two as well, two as well, okay? Now I have the guarantee in each row and each column, the number of open car is even. And if you change one, if you turn one, then you always know this is so-called self-verifying codes because you can automatically correct the error because you know you find only one row with odd number of open cards and only one oh, I want somewhere wrong. Something is wrong. Yes, but it's probably this card should be no. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I have to check whether it is through two, two, four, two, or oh, here's only one. This is not good. How it happened? So you have to change the last row. I know it's correct. Ah, uh, here. Here is not, yeah, not yeah, correct. The last row has here to is correct. Yeah. It must be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, no. For this, we have, and now we have the starting picture because before turning the cards, we have even number of open cards in each row and each column. It so works. Right. I've been oh. told that we are running out of time. <laughs> okay, now if we turn one, what happens? This property is broken here, and this property is broken here. Okay, we are free and we have free. So the magician is only coming and counting and fixing, okay, this one column is not correct. Okay, this one row is not correct. The error must be on the crossing point of these two. Okay? And then you can correct one error. <laughs> this you can find already in computer science unplugged. Right. So you're right. There are several reasons to, to play Hello? this game. I, okay. I will tell you now. Hello. Okay. Now, you can play the oh, game in such a way that you can even correct two errors or three errors. And then I will tell you only the idea. We don't have time really to make yeah. it. Hello. You right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we are running out of time. Oh, oh okay. Eight minutes above. Oh. We, uh, you have to finish. Yeah. Okay, sorry, then let it be, it's okay. <laughs> you can stop here, it's no problem. Yeah. But only two sentences. Yes. So we can change the game for more complex one and be able to correct two or even three errors. And the second point, we can start with this game, okay, with the class, and let the class develop without linear algebra by themselves, the having codes. And this is really very high stage because the having codes are absolutely best one, the shortest ones, for able to correct one error, and they can really discover them with this game. So yeah. this is everything I wanted to tell you, so we will finish now. Sorry. <laughs> sure. Thank you so much. It was very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the attention. Uh, uh, one question at most. <laughs> yeah, one sec. Uh, yeah, this question is related to the morning session. You spoke about uh, language, how the uh, programming languages are very precise and human languages are not necessarily uh, so precise. So my question to you is, um, uh, so there are language teachers in school, and then there may be, you know, math teachers or uh, programming teachers. So uh, 
uh, are there some positives to human language or should human language ideally become precise language ouch uh, so did you get the question can, can you please repeat it yeah so this is regarding languages uh, human languages you said are not precise so the question is should they become precise or are they good the way they are Acoustically, we are not getting the question. Ah, that microphone so, uh, seems to break off. The human languages are not yes. precise. So they are ambiguous. Yes. They don't have clear syntax and semantics. Ram, we understand better. Uh, so human languages, a sentence can have multiple meanings. I will repeat sentence by sentence. Okay, you say the human languages are not precise enough correct. to describe uh, some uh, activity correct, the correct. computer has to perform. Okay. Correct. So, is that good or bad? <laughs> is it good or bad? Okay, I, I think uh, it is. It is a. I think programming is interesting game. Eh? And if you start doing programming, you are not allowed to start the classical way to do it with variables. What we always do at the start, we use programs as the description of one activity. Because if you have variables, the program is responsible for infinitely many activities depending on the value of the variables. If you don't have variables, you describe only one activity, and you can very well check the functionality of the program. And, and then you, in principle, trained with some, if you like, secret language or, or special formal language to exactly describe some procedure as the sequence of actions. And I think this is a good way. This is even a good way for training the natural language. And especially if you do it also in such a way that we try that you are allowed to develop the language, to introduce new words and to allow to use them, that the pupil had, well, first of all, for sure fun, but on the other hand, they learn a lot in this way. Because enabling them to develop a language, to develop the vocabulary, depending on what they really need and to work them in modular way. This is, this is really a big contribution because small children can write complex programs without variables if they use modularity. For instance, you write one loop, then you name this, you, you call it in some way, and you put now this name as a new instruction to another loop. So we have pupils of the age 10 to 12 putting five loops, one into other, without having any troubles with the complexity of, of, of the program, because they do it modularly. And this is very nice way to work between, between creating and using a language and programming. Yeah. You can use our environments to, to test this, if you like. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you once again.